everyone, and welcome back to VMs End to End, a series where we talk about Compute Engine VMs. And lately, we've been talking about using VMs together with other services and tools. And today, I'm excited that we have Summer here from GitLab to talk about using GitLab together with Compute Engine. Uh, welcome, Summer. Sure. Thank you very much, uh, Brian. And uh, thank you for having me on this series. Uh, so excited for it. Absolutely. Um, and I usually like to start off with a question, kind of, you know, what is the thing? But I have to admit, you know, um, my I think my mental model of GitLab is probably wrong. I, you know, when I think about it, I think of it primarily as kind of like a, a web-based Git. Um, but I think that's incomplete uh, these days. So what what is what is GitLab? OK, thank you. That's a great question. And actually, Brian, uh, maybe it makes you feel better to know that you are not alone. Many people, when we discuss GitLab web, they correlated with the Git capability, which the source code management. Now, although that's a major uh, capability in GitLab, that's that's the core one. GitLab is much bigger than that. GitLab today, if I would describe it shortly, is the only DevSecOps platform that enables developers and operators to automate the whole life cycle for application and infrastructure provisioning end to end, including source code management, continuous integration, continuous de uh, security, continuous deployment, along with all the required analytics and uh, governance on top of the whole life cycle. So it's an end-to-end -end platform that can get you from idea to production. OK, yeah, that's a lot more than, than I was thinking. And um, that is a lot of pieces, in fact. Um, so could you describe a little bit about how um, those pieces relate to VMs, like maybe a high-level architecture of, you know, what GitLab is and how, how the parts work? Sure, sure. So when I describe GitLab, I like for simplicity, I like to put it in two big boxes. The Git server, and by any means, I don't mean server by machine. It's like the Git service, which is responsible for the, all the source code management, users uh, management, authentication, authorization, uh, web application portal, and all that. And then you have the second part, which is GitLab runners. They are responsible to pull the automation job and execute them. So you can think of them as the engine for the automation jobs, uh, which are uh, which are responsible to uh, run these uh, these jobs. Now, I'm saying that back to your question. This is where you can deploy GitLab server on Google machines or VMs, as well, uh, uh, and also you can have GitLab runners on different VMs based on the automation job requirements. So this is where the mapping between GitLab deployment and GitLab target workload to Google Google VMs. Got it. Okay, so you can have um, you know your runners in different places and like the 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 managed service itself like um, you can run that yourself and are there other options for for where that runs? Actually True, yes. And GitLab pro today provides, uh, enables co customers to use GitLab as a service or as a SaaS, which is GitLab.com, or as a self-managed instance, which is all within uh, within their data center on-prem or in Google Cloud or other clouds. Now, the point here is, again, the, cho the choice for how to consume GitLab does not dictate how you want or you would love to, uh, the customers should consume GitLab runners or where they should be deployed. I can easily go for, I can, I'm using GitLab.com or the SaaS while also having my runners within Google, Google Cloud, for example, on Google VMs uh, using different types of, of, of VMs. Okay, that's, that's great. Actually, a lot of flexibility there. So could you talk a little bit more about um, this, uh, different kinds of VMs or, you know, how the runners kind of work on Compute Engine. Let's take an example here. Imagine that you are doing a data analytics automation job. And that, so usually these automation jobs have three main parts, data extraction, data manipulation, and data deployment or push. Now, these different jobs types would require different resources in the background. And usually when you deploy them, you choose maybe a lighter machine for the data extraction, but more of a, a well or high end machine with CPU and RAM for the data manipulation and for the data deployment, uh, a more uh, a high CPU maybe machines. 
Now, these are jobs that each of these jobs will be running on a separate runner in GitLab. And I can map that to a different VM. And this is what I love about Google Cloud. In Google Cloud, I customers have a very wide choices of varieties of different VMs families. Based on the expected workload, they can choose what VM to use. So put every, all of these pieces together. I have a job. I can tell what are the resources. I can map that to a GitLab runner. I can host that GitLab runner inside Google Cloud, and then I can dictate what type of machine I want to deploy that GitLab runner on top. And that means guaranteed ex uh, uh, expected uh, performance all the way across the whole pipeline from uh, from start to the to be to the end. That's excellent. And you know, for folks watching this series, they probably know a lot about the different machine types and families, so they can use all of that knowledge to kind of tune things or make the right shape machine for the workloads they have. Um, that's really powerful. I have to, okay, then I have to kind of follow up with like a, a classic question from like a Google kind of perspective. You know, how, how does it scale? You know, like bigger or smaller? I was expecting that absolutely from a, a Google uh, cloud provider like Google. Uh, one of the awesome things when you run on the cloud, on Google Cloud mainly, is that you get the scalability as a built-in capability in the, in the infrastructure, in the platform. In GitLab runners, if we go, actually, before going there, as I said before, GitLab overall has GitLab server and GitLab runners. GitLab server, especially for customers who choose to, to do a self-managed GitLab, is, has scalability as a built-in DNA inside the design. So the components in GitLab server can be, each of them can be deployed on a separate VMs and they can be scaled as per the expected workload. Example, I had customers who were expecting high workload from um, uh, on, on the Git, Git uh, uh, functions, push, pull, clone, all that. So they were looking mainly to scale the component in GitLab who's responsible for these functions, GitLab. While other customers uh, in, in this region, I had another customer who was mainly after scaling the web interface of the GitLab. And again, you can do that thanks to the, to the uh, uh, distributed architecture of the GitLab server. Now, when I go to the GitLab runner, things are even more interesting. Because in, in GitLab Runner, we, we use what we call executors for these runners, like how you want to execute this runner. I can deploy a GitLab Runner on a VM. And in that case, I can make use of the node group in, in Google. I can have VMs within a node group. I can define scalability thresholds based on the workload, based on the time maybe, and then scale up and down. Worth to mention that you have also GitLab runners, executors in Kubernetes, where you can have scalability out of the box within the GitLab runner, within uh, inside the Kubernetes uh, cluster. Oh, that's great. So people who you know already are running a Kubernetes cluster and it has its own kind of scaling settings, you can just use that. Or if you're running on VMs, I guess you said kind of node pool. So that in that would be managed instance groups in kind of you know compute engine terms. So you could set your same kind of thresholds around, um, if, if you've got a managed instance group, you could say, okay, when this pool gets busy, then you can start more VMs. And I guess you could use that for your runners. That's, that's really nice. Exactly right. So you mentioned talking to multiple different customers and different things. And I, I love to kind of gather that experience when, when it's available. So what kind of patterns do you see of how people are actually deploying GitLab, you know, you know in a cloud like Google? Uh, the general theme, if I would put a title, is the hybrid pattern. And this is where some customers decide to go for GitLab.com in order to save on or make use of the operation savings and just make it somebody else's uh, responsibility to manage the GitLab server, while still having their runners deployed within their networking, for example, in Google Cloud, next to where their applications are, are deployed. So basically, they end up just pulling the workload or the automation job from the GitLab.com and execute it inside inside uh, inside GitLab uh, within the Google Cloud. Other customers as well, in in parallel, you can do that. 
you can mix and match between the GitLab runners types or executors I was referring to. Now, thanks to Google, I have the option to spin up a GTE cluster. I have, I can have my autopilot cluster. I can have my Anthos cluster in Kubernetes. While in the same time, I can have my VM farm inside the Google, Google Cloud. Now, think of it this way, Brian. You have a pipeline. Some of the jobs are cloud native jobs. They can, they are best to be deployed or executed within the GTE Kubernetes. So this is where you can have a, a Kubernetes type runner, while other jobs are best suited for VMs. And they, and then you are deploying it. So one pipeline can make use of this two war, these two words all together at the same time and execute and distribute the jobs between both of both of them at the same time. This is why I said it's a hybrid model between SaaS, self-managed, and even with the runners between the different services based on really the workload. The theme, it's dictated by the customer requirements and the applications requirements, not by the technology limitations, whether from Google side or GitLab side. That sounds really appealing. So let me let me test this uh, thought around because one of the scenarios I see people run into fairly often is they have you know kind of a developer environment, an integration environment, and a production environment, and they need to run you know some of their things in like unit tests you know one place, but the integration test won't work unless they run in the integration environment, and other things shouldn't. So could you configure that with this? Not only can be configured, it can be automated. Some of the so so basically in the in GitLab automation or GitLab pipeline, I can communicate with Google Cloud Services, spin up a VM or even a Kubernetes cluster, deploy the machine or the application for testing purposes, as you said, performance, security testing, and and load testing or other types of tests, and then deprovision the whole environment once once I am done. Again, I am. As an automation tool, I am working against a very flexible platform on Google Cloud, which means that I can spin up resources. Now, let me add to the scenario you mentioned here, uh, a, very, a common scenario I see in the market while customers are migrating to the Google Cloud. It's not something that happens overnight. We all know that. It's a, it's a process. It's a project. Why they are doing that, the need to run in a hybrid between Google Cloud and within their data center or outside the Google Cloud, it's, 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 there is a big need there. Like, and it's not, it's not for one or two days. It will run in, in concurrently for a good time. This is where customers are using, are deploying GitLab runners on both sides. Still, they can have, they can have their own self-managed GitLab in, in Google, while the runners can be distributed between different inside Google or even outside Google to do this uh, applications migration. Oh, that is great. I'm glad you mentioned the migration story because that is another like very common and um, you know challenging to make sure things are working uh, the same in different environments all the time. Um, so I'm I'm imagining that there are some folks that are you know already using GitLab and might want to figure out how to you know add some Google Cloud in the mix, or folks that are all in a Google Cloud and want to add some of these you know capabilities you talked about. Um, how would you recommend people get started and do maybe a trial, uh, an experiment, you know, with their own systems? The easiest and most straightforward path, just jump on gitlab.com, spin up a trial account. It will give you access for a month, I believe, for to the highest tier in GitLab. And you are you, you can start doing automation and building your projects there. Second, we are an all remote company. I'm sure you, you know that brand even before the COVID thing. So uh, I'm, I've been working from home before the COVID. And uh, so that's why there is always someone available worldwide to help you. Spe please reach out to GitLab uh, reps in your region and they, are, they will be more than happy to uh, support you and get you up and running in, 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 in GitLab and provide any kinds of demos or, or maybe uh, presentations on the overall platform. Also, Google is a great partner to GitLab. So please feel free also to reach out to Google reps in your region and they will be also happily uh, to connect you with GitLab uh, uh, consultants and help you in your journey with uh, the automation on GitLab. 
Awesome. Love to see it. So you can kind of start with the managed service, like try some things out, make sure the runners like do what you need to do and then figure out kind of where you want to go from there. That's awesome. Um, thank you so much for coming and, and joining and sharing all of this information. Thank you very much, Brian, for having me. I really enjoyed the discussion. Thank you. Likewise. And I'd like to thank everyone watching uh, for your time. And it, it means a lot. So thank you very much for that. Um, and, you know, consider giving this a try. See if it helps you solve problems or challenges you might have in, in your work. And happy computing.